Hi everyone, here's what we'll be making today. This is a long tutorial, but I've broken everything down and added timestamps into comments for you to simply scroll through these steps more easily. Without further ado, let's get started. To start off, create a nice video with some good tracking points. Good tracking points can be anything as long as they're visible in the background. For example, black dots on a white background and green dots on a blue background, etc. I've recorded a video of a watch, but instead of the clock being shown, it'll be a galaxy. I've shot this video on my iPhone 8 in 4K at 60fps, but 1080p on 30fps will do fine as well. I've also imported a high quality picture of a galaxy. I'll leave a link in the description where you can find good space wallpapers. The higher the quality of the picture is, the better the result will be. First, drag your footage on the timeline. After that, we're going to pre-comp the video. This way we can add some track and optimization to the footage. You can pre-comp your video by right-clicking your video and press pre-comp. Give the pre-comp a name and make sure Move All Attributes into the new composition is selected. Press OK. Go into the pre-comp by double-clicking it. It's like opening a folder. Once in your pre-comp, select your video and add the following effects. Curves. Sharpen. And brightness and contrast. These are all included in standard After Effects. Once applied, we're going to adjust the settings to amplify colors and detail. These changes are only for the tracking process and won't be seen in the vinyl result. Once you have optimized your video, we're going to track the pre-comp. Go back into the main composition. After that, go to the tracker window. If you don't have this window, go to window and click tracker. Select your footage and click track camera to start the tracking process. It will immediately start tracking, so wait to see how that turns out first. Make sure that the average error amount of pixels is under 1.5 for the best result. If it's over that, play around with the settings. For example, you can enable detailed analysis. Once the tracking process is complete, you'll be left with tracking points all over your video. As you can see, I adjusted my optimization a bit for better tracking. Select the 3D camera tracker, and this will reveal all the tracking points on your video. It can occur that you need to scroll a bit through your footage to select better points. You can select a single tracking point by clicking it, or select multiple by holding shift and clicking other points. I recommend selecting multiple points as this will give you better results. Once you have your point selected, right click and press create null in camera. You'll see that two layers have been created, a 3D tracker camera layer and a track null layer. Shorten the null to the length of the clip and keep it all organized. You can cut your layer by pressing Ctrl, Shift, D. You can get rid of your tracking optimization now. We're going to create a circular shape layer. You can do this by going to Layer, New, Shape Layer. Press Add, click Ellipse and press Add again and click Fill you've now created a circle shape layer. Let's make it 3D by clicking the cube icon. If you don't have this icon, click the toggle switches modes button. Now that the layer is 3D, we'll align it to our tracking points by copying the track nulls position and rotation. You can open your nulls position option by selecting it and pressing P on your keyboard. Open the rotation settings as well by holding shift and pressing R. Also open your shape layer's position by selecting the layer and pressing R on your keyboard. And open your rotation settings as well by holding shift and pressing R. Now copy the nulls position and rotation settings to your shape layer's position and rotation settings. Once you've completed this step, the shape layer should be aligned to the tracking points. Change the shape layer size to fit the tracked object. Change the nulls position carefully if the shape layer isn't aligned properly. Don't forget to recopy the position back to your shape layer after. 
After all that, change the color of your shape layer to white. Drag the space layer under the shape layer. Pre-comp your space layer. You can do this by right-clicking the layer and clicking pre-comp. Go into your pre-comp by double-clicking it. Adjust the pre-comp size to the size of the layer. Apply the effect named Turbulent Displace onto your space layer. Animate it by keyframing the evolution and adjust the amount and size settings to your likings. I'm also going to create a new adjustment layer and apply the effect named Looks. I will adjust the coloring and the look of the galaxy. Go back into your main composition and make the galaxy a 3D layer. Align it to the position and the rotation of the null layer. After that, we'll open the anchor point and the position options by pressing A first and holding Shift P to open the position. We're going to lower the layer's anchor point to send the layer further back into C space. This will make it look like it's a deep space and moves the layer slower than normal. This creates a depth illusion. Make sure it doesn't go over the edge of your shape layer. To simulate depth even more, you'll want to add the optics compensation effect to your pre-comp. I'll put the field of view on 100 and make sure to enable the reverse lens distortion. After that, you can change the position to center out the space under your shape layer. Once you've done that, we're going to change the space layer's track mat to alpha mat. If you follow the steps correctly, you should now see the space under your shape layer that you created earlier. Now that we have our portal ready, I'm going to duplicate the shape layer and change the fill color to a dark blue. I'm going to change the blending mode to screen and this will make the galaxy darker. To create a glowing effect coming from the galaxy, I'm going to add deep glow. If you do not have this plugin, you can use the normal glow. I'm going to set the radius to 970 and the exposure to 0.30. Go into the style options and change the blending mode to screen. After that, unselect auto detect gamma under the gamma correction settings. Select the deep glow effect and press Ctrl D on your keyboard to duplicate the effect. I'm going to lower the radius to 700 and change the exposure to 1. Change the blend mode to add and uncheck all gamma correction options. To start creating a saber edge, I'm going to create a new solid layer. Make it square, but twice the size of your frame's height. My frame height is 1080 pixels, so I'm going to make it 2160 by 2160 pixels. Next up, duplicate one of the shape layers, uncheck the 3D option, center it out, and drag it above your solid. Enable the grid under View, Show Grid. After that, enable the grid Snap under View, Snap the Grid. 
Also turn on title action save overlay. This makes it easier to see where your center is. Select the ellipse tool in your toolbar and select your solid layer. Click in the center of your solid and immediately press and hold Ctrl, Shift and Alt on your keyboard. Now drag while holding the buttons and try to make an ellipse mask the same size as your duplicated shape layer. Once you have the right size, let go of your mouse button and release your keyboard buttons. If you don't have the right size, press Ctrl Z once to undo your mask and restart. Delete the shape layer and make the solid a 3D layer. Copy the position and rotation settings from your null to your solid. You have now created a new mask on your solid the same size as your existing shape layer and moved it into 3D space. You can now add the saber effect. The saber effect is a free effect from Video Copilot and can be downloaded from their website. Once added, go into the customized core settings to change the core type to layer masks. It'll only show your saber effect now. To fix this, go into the render settings and change the composite settings to transparent. You can create your own look or select a preset. As you can see, it took me quite a while to get a result I was happy with. Next up, we're going to be creating particles that fly around the object. Create a new solid the same size as your composition. Apply the trap code particular effect and click the designer button. Make the emitter type a box and change the particles per second to 10 and the emitter size to 200. Go into the motion settings, change the direction spread to 45%, the velocity to 17, the velocity random to 0%, the velocity distribution to 0 and the velocity from motion to 30%. Go into the particle type, change the particle type to glow sphere, the life to 20 seconds and play around with the glow to get a look you're happy with. In the size rotation settings, change the size to 2 and select the preset that looks like this. Do the same thing for the opacity. You can change the color if you'd like, but I'm going to keep it white. Press apply on the right bottom corner to save your settings. Open your track null's position and rotation settings and go back to your particle layer. Copy the position settings to the emitter position under the emitter options and the rotation settings to the XYZ rotation settings. Make the layer longer on your timeline Move the new endpoint of your layer to match other layers their endpoints. Particles need some time to generate, so they will always appear later in your layer. This is a simple trick to move the layer to a time where they have already been created. Create a new adjustment layer and apply looks to it. We're going to make some final changes to the coloring. I'll show you what I did on my screen, but I won't be going over every setting available in the Magic Bullet Looks effect. This is totally up to your personal preferences, and it's always fun to play around with the settings yourself. Also, feel free to adjust any of the previous settings if you're not happy with them. I'll be leaving a download link to this project file in the description below. This was the Space Portal tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it and that it was easy to follow. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments or in our Discord server. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. That's all for today, until next time. Yeah.